Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to experimental snapshot number one of Minecraft 1.18. That's right, 1.18 is on the horizon ladies and gentlemen, and this is the first sort of sneak preview of this. Uh, this is not available regularly as a snapshot, it's sort of an experimental test version where they're testing out some new concepts, and I want to highlight one of the new concepts in this video, namely the change that mobs can only spawn in complete darkness. Now, there are other interesting things in this snapshot, including new biomes like Lofty Peaks Mountains, Snow-Capped Mountains, uh, we got groves, we got meadows, uh, lots of interesting things which you can see on your screen now, but we're going to focus mainly on the lighting changes and what it means for the game. So, let's get started. So, to better understand the lighting changes that happen between 117 and 118, we're first going to understand how light works in Minecraft. Basically, every block that emits light in Minecraft has an inherent light value. So for a torch, if I stand right inside the torch and hit F3, the debug menu, you can see on the left-hand side, it says client light 15, and then parentheses 15 sky 14 block. The thing we're interested in is the block light level. So it happens to be 14 on the block with the torch. If I used another light source, let's say, I don't know, let's just say uh, glow lichen, for instance, uh, that's going to be less, so it's going to be a light level of 7 on the block, as you can see. So that's the thing we're looking at. Now, if we have a torch down here, light level is 14, right? So we look, take a look at F3, light level is 14. Now, if we move away from this light source, the light level diminishes by 1 for every block we move away. So if I move on to this block, the light level goes down to 13. If I move away again, it goes down to 12. If I move away this direction, which is still away from the light source, goes down to 11, and then 10, 9, 8, and then right here is the critical block, because once you have your block light level less than 7, or equal to 7, that's where mobs can spawn. So right here is where mobs can spawn in 117. That is how it was before this snapshot. But now, in this snapshot, the block light level does not have to be less than 7. It has to be zero. So that means we can move out to six, five, four, three, two, one. And on this next block, if this was not here, this block is zero, which means it's in total darkness because it's no longer being lit at all by that torch. So that means that mobs can spawn on this block in 118. So that's the change that occurred. Previously in 117, the block light level had to be seven or less to allow mobs to spawn, but now it has to be zero for mobs to spawn. So that means instead of having the area surrounded by the, or uh, the area basically that the gold blocks take up being non-spawnable, now the area that the iron blocks take up and the gold blocks is non-spawnable from a single torch. Now I can demonstrate this here pretty easily if I just uh, switch the world from peaceful to hard. You will see that as I get away from this, no mobs will spawn in here where the torch is. They'll all spawn in the dark areas surrounding it, as you can see. Yep, so yeah, all the area inside the glass and yeah, all the area with the iron blocks and the gold blocks is non-spawnable, but as you can see, mobs spawn directly outside of this. So in effect, what that means is the torch is now much more powerful to prevent mob spawning in the area, as well as other light sources like the glow lichen, now being able to prevent mobs like a torch used to. So that is effectively what has happened with the lighting. Uh, the same thing applies to other things like amethyst. So amethyst can now prevent mob spawning because this actually uh, gives off light level. So uh, yeah, this previously could not prevent any mob spawns, but now can. And the same happens with other light sources as well, which we'll get into. So now that we know how lighting works and what the change from 117 to the experimental 118 snapshot is, let's sort of list now some pros and some cons, both for and against this change. So the first pro is that mob spawning in total darkness only allows for more functionality and creativity in builds that use lighting. Just as a very, very basic case in point, we have three lanterns here 
that illuminate this pathway. Now, the goal when I made this pathway was to make a path which is lit up on the pathway itself, as well as two blocks on either side. So here and here. So all those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks in a row, right here, all across the pathway, up and down, should be non-spawnable. That was the goal here. So I did that here with just three lanterns. Pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. Um, let's see how many lanterns it would take in 117 to accomplish the exact same thing. So here is the pathway in 117. It actually took 13 lanterns to light up the entire pathway and the two blocks uh, on either side, despite the fact that the path is about 30 blocks long. And here is what it looks like in 118. Same exact pathway, different lighting scheme. I think you can tell from this you have a lot of different options, a lot more variability in what you can do with the pathway in, to make it safe, instead of just having a whole bunch of lampposts that you have to put there to make it and not, not, not even that safe, really. Like, just, like, marginally safe. So I think that demonstrates the point. But in case it didn't, let me make another case for creativity being unleashed with this change. Perhaps the greatest argument for having mobs only spawn in complete darkness has to do with the criminally underutilized non-traditional light sources. Things like the soul torch, the soul lantern, the glow lichen, or candles, or crying obsidian like we got over here. Uh, things like that. These non-traditional light sources typically are not seen, at least not seen very often, without being in conjunction with another more powerful light source like a torch. Uh, the reason is, is that these things just simply don't give off that much light. You can see there's a little bit of light. Seems like it gives off a decent amount of light. You think, you know, maybe it's worth using, but no. In fact, the armor stands with the creeper heads, these represent the closest spot that mobs can spawn to the soul lantern in 117. That's right. Literally diagonally and down one block from the soul lantern is a spawnable space uh, for, yeah, for, uh, for, for mobs. So basically with the soul lantern here, and you put it on like a wall or something, the next block over and down one is not uh, not not going to be a good time. You're going to have mobs spawn there. That's why you rarely ever see these used anywhere without being used in conjunction with like a torch or glowstone underneath of carpets or some other more powerful hidden light source. But in 118, if mobs can only spawn in complete darkness, then you have... Mobs only able to spawn at the place where the zombies with the armor stands are located. So you can see it's a little bit more of a bigger area. So you have much more area to work with with the soul lanterns. And you're not confined to literally a soul lantern like every other block. If you put this like one block up from where you want to have no mob spawn. So that's a crazy restriction with these. But it's almost non-existent with the 118 perimeter here. Here's a couple more hypothetical scenarios. Let's say you wanted to make an area that had glow lichen all over it, right? You wanted this sort of block pattern here, right? So you want glow lichen on literally every surface. Why? I don't know. I don't make these rules up. They're just sort of rules that you could do, potentially. That's great. It's awesome that there's glow lichen here. But guess what? Glow lichen only has a light level of 7. Meaning that... Glow Lichen does not prevent any mobs from spawning anywhere, at any time, ever. So, unless you did something like this, where you had Glowstone in the ground, in some spots, and then covered that with Glow Lichen, you can't do a safe base with Glow Lichen around. One final thing I want to share with you is this candle lit pathway. This is a four wide pathway with the candles one block above the pathway itself. Currently in 118, if we take a look at F3 menu, this is totally safe. Mobs can't spawn here because there is no block that is below light level 1. But let's say we were not in 118, let's say we were in 117. What will it take now to light up this whole pathway to block light level 7 or more? Well, let's just take a look. So right here we have block light level 4, so not even the block closest to the candle on the pathway 
is lit up at all. Let's see if we increase this. All right, still the block directly next to the candle still not lit up. So still not spawn proof, still not safe. So we actually have to have four candles in these positions and that is required for just this block here to be safe, not even including any of the other blocks. So let's just put four here. Let's get out our flint and steel. You can already see that things are a bit frustrating here. So, okay, now it's at 10, so now this is safe. So let's go this way, seven, eight, seven right here. Okay, so we gotta increase this. So we put that down. That candle didn't do jack diddly squat. It's still the same light level. So we gotta add another one here. Okay, let's go, I don't know, let's go this way. It's nine, eight, seven, six. Okay, let's put one here. Okay, it went to seven, still not good enough. Mobs can still spawn on this block. So we need another candle here. Let's go over here. This is at five, seven now. Not, okay, so we gotta, we gotta make all these four. So to make the pathway safe in this instance, using 117 uh, mob spawning mechanics, you have to have these candles be four. You cannot have these be just two. Even if you wanted it to be two, the pathway would not be safe in that instance. So there you have it guys. Candles in this configuration must have four candles on each block. Otherwise the path will be spawnable and dangerous. If that doesn't show that the current mob spawning rules in 117 are limiting player creativity, I'm not sure what else will. Another reason I think this is positive for the game is that this no longer requires the player to have to pull up a debug menu to determine a critical game mechanic. So currently in 117, you have to determine where the light goes from 8 to 7 to determine where you are safe and not safe from mob spawning. So doing that without pulling up a debug menu like this, which breaks immersion completely basically. Um, is rather difficult. I mean, you might be able to just say like, you know, maybe here is probably light level seven, roughly. Yeah, okay, so I got that one right, but it is kind of difficult to do if you're not playing a lot and are very familiar with game mechanics, or if you don't, you know, count out blocks, which is also not fun and shouldn't have to be required. Instead, it's just much easier to simply take a look at where the light is hitting, right, and say, hey, the area where the light is, that's where mobs cannot spawn, and where it's darker, that's where they can. So, yeah, you can clearly see this grass is brighter, it's lighter, because the light is touching it, than, say, this patch of grass over here. So you can easily draw out a big circle instantly without having to refer to any sort of debug menu that breaks immersion, and know where mobs can and cannot spawn. In fact, you can even pinpoint the exact spot. Let's just try and do it right here. So... You can clearly see this is lit up, whereas this is not. And it looks like this has a little bit of light on it. Because if you can notice very subtly, this side is a little bit brighter than this side. So it looks to me, looks to me like this is, this is light level zero here for sure. I think this is light level one right here. I'm right. Yep. Zero and one. And that's even with smooth lighting set to maximum. It becomes a lot more apparent if you set smooth lighting to off. You can see that very, very clearly. You can see, yeah, this is a little bit brighter than this, which is a little bit brighter than this total darkness one right here. And of course, that's because this is at zero and this is at one. Another reason I think it's good that the mobs can only spawn in complete darkness is that the caves have greatly expanded in this update. So you can see from this cave, which is not really that atypical of large caverns in this snapshot, there is a lot of ground to cover. And covering all this ground here would take an insane amount of torches if the torch only covered the traditional 117 uh, area less than or equal to 7 uh, in terms of light level, like where it could spawn mobs. It would take forever to basically make any spot safe and you'd have mobs constantly spawning even in areas that you thought you covered right if you do this right here let's say you put a torch down like this in a couple spots right we'll put down a few here a few here put one over here let's have a couple go out this way ok 
Okay, like that. Maybe a couple in here, a couple in here. There we go. And how we doing? How we doing? Let's go into this. And oh, we barely even made a dent on all this massive amount of space. And also some of the areas we thought we might have covered, like let's say here, for instance. Let's see if this is actually spawnable or not. And as you can see, it is indeed spawnable right here. So even if we covered this whole area like we just did, still would not be sufficient to cover every block because we'd miss some spots. And it looks like we also missed a giant spot over here. Definitely, yep, seven, six, seven, yep. All these would be spawnable in 117. But in 118, this would be covered. Uh, and also the glow lichen would help out in this area and help out around the area too, like on these blocks here, for instance. And even like up here, if there was a block like sticking out up here, that would now be non-spawnable. Whereas if it was 117, mobs could just spawn up here all the time, constantly, and then just rain down upon you. Uh, so I think this change with mobs only spawning in complete darkness helps the torch have a range which is comparable to that of the new caves which again are absolutely massive so one supposed con in quotation marks of having mobs only spawn in complete darkness is this idea that because mobs don't spawn as near to light sources as they did before that if you have a light source nearby you'll never encounter any mob ever again and the whole game will just be boring so let's test that out right now uh, I'd also like to point out that first of all um, every single person who's watching this video is gonna light up their base block by block in its entirety no matter what so the argument that you're not gonna have any mobs in your base is totally relevant because that's what you want and also in my experience at least uh, most players who uh, yeah who who light up their area light up their base also have a significant area outside their base lit up so the whole point is already kind of irrelevant because yeah it defeats the point of what you're trying to do basically but let's just see what happens here we're gonna put down a bunch of torches that are definitely close enough together to not have any gaps and we're just gonna run along this and see if or how we do if we encounter any mobs. So we're going to run along this entire pathway that we just torched out here in survival. Uh, and we'll just, let's just bring it up this hill a little ways too. Just to make it interesting. There we go. Okay, so there we go. I think we're going to go ahead and do time set midnight. So it's pitch black out. There we go. Change this to hard difficulty. Game mode survival. Alright, let's just see how we fare. Let's see if we encounter any mobs at all out here. If, if this is true, we should not encounter any mobs at all going down this pathway here. But I would guess that we're probably going to have a couple of mobs that we encounter along the way here, but you never know. Let's just see. So we're walking here, walking here, and already we got a skeleton that's engaging with us. Cool. Okay. Run past him, and then down here. And just for the heck of it, let's just go back and see what else we run into, because, yeah, why not? So, there's a skeleton, there's a zombie. Okay, so we're interacting, fighting with the zombie. There's a skeleton here. Again, this is the supposed path that, you know, is not going to be interrupted by any mobs whatsoever, right? So, we've already encountered a couple of mobs here. Let's climb back up this way. See what we see. Get back up to the top. And... We made it. Nice. So, yeah. Encountered a couple of mobs. And, yeah, definitely was interacting with some mobs, despite the fact that the radius for the torches are now enormous. I saw a couple of people saying that Mobs should not spawn only in complete darkness because it would make dungeons and mob spawners too easy to overtake. And I'm not sure if people know this, but you can actually disable a mob spawner by placing a single torch on the top. So people were literally complaining that instead of placing the torch on top of the mob spawner, you now got to place it on the side of the wall. And actually you can place it like at the, at the entrance to the dungeon, like this. This will actually disable the spawner in 118. I can show you that by switching this to hard difficulty. And yeah, 
this actually disables the entire thing. Um, but this disables the entire thing in 117. So you're moving the torch three blocks. That's what people were complaining about. Let's just, for the sake of argument, to show you how dumb this is, let's see which one's more difficult. Let's just, let's run an experiment. Let's get rid of this, right? And let's do, change this to peaceful for right now. And we'll run over this way. And let's say we take over the dungeon like we're in 118, right? We place it on like the, uh, the first block there on the entrance to the dungeon. Let's just hypothetically say that. Let's go to survival game mode, hard difficulty, and let's go in and take this dungeon over. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, there's a creeper that spawned. Cool. Let's see how much more difficult it is here than it is elsewhere. So the, the dungeon is already disabled, right? No more mobs can spawn in there. This is the last guy. There we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you take it over in 118. We can now get the loot and stuff. Uh, and I think there's a zombie outside that may have spawned from, uh, like, uh, reinforcements. But, yeah, that was pretty easy. That was pretty easy. Now let's try it in 117. So we'll go ahead and switch it back to peaceful. Like so. We'll get our torch back like this. Cool. So now let's play it like it's 117, right? So, change this to hard. All right, 117 now, the supposedly harder method. Wow, that was so much harder. Not, in fact, that was way easier because there wasn't an extra creeper that spawned in here randomly. So yeah, people who complained about that, you're wrong. The next supposed negative of this idea is that when you're out caving, you'll encounter less solitary mobs than you did previously because the torches cover so much more area. But that also neglects the fact that because you have torches covering more area, that concentrates mobs in areas where you have not yet been. So you can see here I have like a nice little pathway here, and that's correct that you, you're not going to see many mobs where you've already been. But... Where you haven't been is where you'll actually see more mobs. So let's say like up here. I haven't actually been here yet. And look, look at that. We've got a creeper and a zombie sitting up here waiting for us. Uh, which can drop in on our head. So to be clear, what I'm saying is that the difficulty is not going to increase or decrease. But it's just going to increase the concentration of mobs where you haven't been. Because the torches cover a greater area. There's nowhere else for the mobs to spawn. So instead of spawning, let's say like here. Which it could have done in 117 or even up here which I could have done in 117 it can't do that anymore so it instead spawns the mob somewhere where you haven't been so the areas where you're exploring next will become more difficult than the areas where you've already been being you know having an occasional mob or two in them the final criticism of this idea is that it makes mob spawners harder to build uh, first of all, no, you should have already been making your mob spawns dark to begin with, and the darker it is, even in 117, the more mobs you'll get, but tinted glass is now a thing. So, yeah, you can use this to make basically anywhere zero light level, like right here, this is zero light level, so mobs can spawn here. Um, so, no, no, that, no, just total straight up no. So, in conclusion, this is a great change to the game, will allow more creativity, reduces dependence on F3, as well as makes it easier to determine at a glance where mobs can and cannot spawn, while also having almost no real drawbacks at all. Anybody who disagrees, you're wrong. The end. <laughs>